Wow, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, our daddy is not just a preacher, an evangelist, a pastor, um, a prophet. He's also a, a, a writer and also what? A composer, producer of songs. Hey! Charlie. So, after reading your Bible, listening to his voice, you want music for worship that will touch your spirit and that will minister to you. Music that will talk to you. Talk to you and preach to you. You still, you go also for the music and listen to it. And you realize that you are blessed. Hallelujah. You see, we are blessed. So God has blessed us mightily. Hallelujah. And I'm so happy. I'm so glad I stand here with wild memories of, you know, I'm even becoming emotional. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, if God can use anything, hey, I didn't know God could use me too as well. I didn't know God could use me, but many, many years ago, many, many years ago, God directed my path. I mean, if there's one of a few times I can say I'm a good person, then it's one of the times I can say, it's not easy to say you're a good person. But the Bible says, the steps of a good man are ordered of God. So this alone makes me know that at least I'm a good man. <laughs> so God ordered my steps. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't know how he did it. And I met this man and for over 30 years. Over 30 years. Over 30 years. You know, my marriage was blessed by men. We are more than, we are 31 years in marriage. Which means that that is 33 years ago, 32 years ago, is when God directed my steps towards this great man of God and gave me a father. God didn't give me a pastor. God didn't give me a teacher. God didn't give me a prophet. God gave me a father. And by the grace of God, he has fathered me in ministry. You know, when people ask me, what is your calling? What is your anointing? I don't even know what to tell them. You see, because my calling, my anointing, my everything is what I see my father do. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> what I see my father do. And um, one of the things that has made us who we are today as children of Bishop is comes having of comes when you spend so many days and hours talking to us you know so this word you know there are certain words that when you hear it doesn't mean a lot to you but for some of us it means a lot to us when the bible said that the spirit entered into me as he speak then you come to believe and understand that actually words words are spirit spiritual and words have spirit behind it and for many, many years, as we have followed him, as we have sat under his feet, as we have listened to him, God has used us. And God has blessed us. Hallelujah. And I'm so happy. I'm so, so happy that by the grace of God, by the grace of God, God has given us this opportunity as Loyalty House International. One. One of the 41 denominations, just one of the, of the over 40 denominations, to, hope, to have him have a camp with us. We are honored and we are privileged. And we thank you, Bishop, for this time. And ladies and gentlemen, help me to welcome our father, my father, your father, the Bishop, that he was most. Welcome, Bishop. Welcome. We are your children.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time. Thanks for bringing us together to receive from you an encounter, an impartation, an experience of the Holy Spirit that will transform our lives and change our ministries. Thanks for the blessing you give to us. Thanks for your word that you give to us. We are grateful. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Well, I'm so excited to be here. And um, to see all of you live. Amen. It is a blessing. And um, no matter how short this encounter is, it is going to change your life forever. So I want you to open your hearts and be ready for uh, a great blessing. All right. I know that God has a blessing for his church because we are his church and because we are his church um, he has always something to tell us because we are part of the the vine he's the, we are, he's the vine we are the branches there's always something that he has to tell us because the, there's a flow from the roots through the vine or the stem and then to the branches. So there's always something coming if we are ready to receive. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, this camp has something strange as a theme. Yes. Why is this church not growing? Yes. It's, it's a question. Amen. So let's start with Luke chapter 2. Verse 42. When he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. Amen. Amen. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding 
and his answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that you sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart. Amen. Amen. Right. Now, we see here Jesus Christ sitting in the midst of um, the, 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 the leaders of the church. Bible says, hearing them and asking questions. Now, uh, revelation and the receiving of the word of God comes through asking questions. You see, rev- question, asking questions is, a, is the opening of the door of your heart for revelation. Revelation doesn't come to closed hearts because not everybody is ready or even spiritual enough to even receive. Amen. Amen. So, There is something that I think must happen. Something must happen before revelation starts to come to you. So that's why we preach sometimes. And um, people don't understand what is being said. And the reason is because they have never heard or even received the revelation that God is trying to give to them. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, the Bible says, The natural man receiveth not. He does not receive. It, it won't get into him. You can preach a thousand ways and write many books but he will not receive because the Bible says the natural man receiveth not. The things of the spirit of God. So there is a need to move from being this kind of person who doesn't receive. Hmm? To becoming a kind of person who receives. Hmm. I don't know whether I'm talking to the right group. Maybe I should go to another place. Now, why is it that some people simply do not receive? Yes. It is this same reason. People are not spiritual. It says they 
It says, the natural man receiveth not. So I may be sharing things with you, but because you are natural and you are not spiritual, you don't receive. You need to be spiritual to appreciate these books. You need to be spiritual. And unfortunately, bishops are even not spiritual sometimes. Pastors are not spiritual many times. And you may be called pastor, but a pastor is simply a person who is trying to serve the Lord. Everything that applies to Christians applies to pastors, including spirituality. And you see them not having spirituality. They are not spiritual. I don't mean that they are sinners or they are living in sin. They are not spiritual. Once you are not spiritual, you won't hear and the revelation will not get to you. And you don't become what you could become. Are you there? And what did he say? I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard Revelations 1 and verse 10. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And what heard? Heard behind me a great voice. If I had not been in the spirit or I had not been spiritual, I would not have heard. That's why he said that the natural man receiveth not. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't get it. And if things don't get into him. So you can write any book you want to write. And give it any nice title you want to give it. About a thousand micro churches, about a mega church. Where is it? Mega church. Look at how many books I have got here. All this is not all the books, there are some on this side. Yes. Church growth. Church planting. A mega church will not enter into the head or the heart of a person who is not spiritual. Because the unspiritual receiveth not. That is why you, you have. Sometimes people wonder that like someone outside our church will be receiving. You know, when I meet people, sometimes who are not in our church, the way they are swallowing the revelation that we have in this church, in your church, and receiving what you have in your church as diamonds and gold. Yes. You know, yesterday, I think it was yesterday or the day before, Bishop Saki was telling me on the phone how, you know, he's in a city called Jos in Nigeria. He said, look, you are famous here. He said the part, no, 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 please, please. He said, look, the people, there are people here, they are very, very kind. He said, you don't have any idea. You talk to them, they'll be saying, oh, yes, oh, yes. I mean, very new current terms, like they are very up to date. They watch, they watch the programs. They know, he said, he said oh, that's our father. That's, that's, how, that's how they know me, with big churches. Yes. 
and people are reading books. But you see, the natural man, he may be called loyalty house or lighthouse or any house. It doesn't matter whatever house it is. If he's a natural man, you can write any book, preach any message, but he receiveth not. Yes. He receiveth not. Because because he is natural. Says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I heard straight away. So you, if you are here and you are walking in nonsense flesh attitude. Huh? Nonsense flesh attitudes. You get what I'm saying? All these preachings and whatever is not going to have any effect. Because your nonsense flesh attitudes are going to block the revelation. So the revelation will be fantastic, wonderful, exceptional, unusual. But you are not in the spirit. And therefore it doesn't have that effect on you. Oh yes. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard... Behind me, a great voice. So there can be a great voice right by you, but if you are not spiritual, great voice or great pastor, great man of God, great anointing, great presence, it will not have any effect on you because of your nonsense flesh attitude. Are you there or you are leaving? Yes. So, everyone who calls himself a pastor and who, who call yourself children, sons, and daughters, you see, if a man has a wife who goes into labor and when she finishes her labor, you call the husband to come and see the child. And when the child comes, you show a bucket, a very big black frog. And you say, this is the child that your wife has been in labor and this is what she has produced. As a father, would you accept it that this is this is my this is my child? What? This is not my, my child because the father of a frog is not it is a frog. The father of a frog is a frog. You look at it and say, That's not my that's not this your child. We were here with her for four hours. She was in labor. When she gave birth, this is what came out. Will you accept it? You will not accept it. What about if when you come and they show you a little monkey? And say, this is your new child. This is your third born. Will you accept it? So in the realm of the spirit, we are seeing certain spiritual minkies and spiritual frogs and which are claiming in the realm of the spirit to have come from somewhere. And we are asking that, is it a spiritual monkey or is it a spiritual person? What have we produced? What have we produced? Where is it coming from? I mean, look at your church for the last so many years. You are struggling to have more than 28 people. 
15 people after so many years. And we ask the question, why is this church not growing? Why? Why? Why is this thing coming from? This thing in the bucket, you've gone to buy a plastic bucket from a makola and you put a frog in and say, this is your child. Hey! How come your church has no money? You have a church building without doors. And you are happily in the building without doors forever. Why? I mean, have you seen any of our churches without doors? Huh? Not plastered. Not painted. No tiles. Outside is a bush. And you are asking yourself, is this from the same womb? Huh? Why is this church not working? What is this pastor doing? Because of your nonsense flesh attitude, you cannot receive the revelation that makes you grow. Oh, yes. Listen, asking questions is the door in the realm of the spirit is a, is, is, a, is a door to your spirit. It's a door to your spirit. It's, it shows that a person's heart is open. That's why he even has a question. And the reason he has no question is because his spirit is closed. I've never asked any lady in my life, maybe apart from my wife, because she's, she, she will be going to do whatever. I don't, I don't ask anybody that I know, where can I find the hairdresser who has done your hair? <laughs> my spirit is close to such things. Either make the hair nice or not. But I don't need to know where, who, how, what the direction, whether the place is nice, it's not nice. I don't know anything about it. I've never asked a question about it. I don't, I'm, I'm honestly ignorant about it. Okay. Apart from a, c- a couple of places, I know my wife goes. But, I, I, and that one, only the one that is near my house. <laughs> That's the only one I know. Yes. Because my spirit is not open to hair. When says, the lady with the brown hair, the lady with the, the braids, the, I don't know. I don't notice that. I don't notice it. Oh, yes. But many ladies who, who would never ask any question about spiritual things, a question like, why is this church not growing? Why don't we have air conditioner in our church? Yes. I mean, where, where, where are you coming from? Is, is an elephant giving birth to a monkey? Is an elephant giving birth to an antelope? Some of you were in an Akazo Bible school. Look at this place. It was built practically. We've been here practically as we've been building it. And you were here. And you've been sent. But you can't build even one block on top of the other. You are happy to stay in a forest. In the bushes. You are comfortable. You are comfortable as though you are still in Adam and Eve's time before there was any development. Why can this pastor not buy a car? Why 
Why not? Some of you have come from central region and other places using buses after 11 years in the ministry. Nine years as a pastor. You qualified 12 years ago. Seven years in the ministry. What is it? No car. No house. No money. You, you are making the ministry look as though it is a disadvantage to be in the ministry so that people's children will say, I don't want to be a pastor. I don't want to be like this priest or this pastor. Yeah. Because you are not spiritual. Nonsense flesh attitudes make you unspiritual. And so you are never able to get into the realm of the spirit to open your spirit to receive the wonders of these spiritual blessings that are here, that are producing great fruits all over the world. Nonsense monkey flesh attitudes. Now, I haven't called anybody a monkey. I haven't called anybody a nonsense. I haven't called anybody a flesh. If it's you, 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 you know yourself. But if it's not you, don't, don't say that somebody is insulting you. Isaiah chapter 48. Now, that says the Lord, verse 17. Thy Redeemer. Amen. Amen. That says the Lord, thy Redeemer. The Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. Thy God which teacheth thee to profit. I'm the one who makes you. If you study the word, you will be a very successful businessman too. Yes. Yes. I am sure of that. I'm sure of that. Our businessmen who are not spiritual can't easily prosper. And don't. Very few businessmen prosper. Real prosperity. Real prosperity that you are prosperous today. Your business has increased. You become this. You become, most of them, it's a, something small, some government, whatever loan, some government business, something. Then after some time, it's not working. They are very poor. Then they blame, start to blame the church for their poverty and their difficulty. Some of them are lay pastors and they don't do well because... You are not spiritual. You don't receive the revelation. The revelation from the Bible, it says, I am the Lord that teacheth thee to profit. Put my scripture back. I am the Lord that teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way thou shouldest go. Many businesses are just nonsense businesses. It's not a real business. And it's not amounting to a certain level of prosperity. Let's face it. Let's say we, we do fundraising in churches. When we do fundraising, you see 20 cities, 40, 50 cities, 80, 120. That's it. Yeah. And people can't give much. And you see people say they are doing business, they are doing this. A lot of things, it's just nothing. Yes. But he says, I am the Lord, which teacheth thee to profit. And if you humble yourself. Kenneth Hagin said that, Lord, that Jesus appeared to him in a vision. Jesus was standing here, he was standing here. Jesus told him that if you learn to follow me, I'll make you rich. It, was, it is a side effect of following Jesus. He says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. First sign is that money and those things go off. Go off. Yes. That's why today, by the grace, I don't need 
to know even the price of Kelewele. Because God has elevated me. There was a time that it was very important. Because I used to stand by the roadside to buy Kelewele. I knew those who count and those who don't count it. Today, God has lifted me way above that level. Way above that level. Way above that level. God has taught me to be prophet. I don't know the price of even cars. Yes, I don't, I don't know the price of cars. I'm blessed. Yes. Many things I don't know the price. Yes. If you tell me this car costs this, I, I don't know. Oh, yes. It was not so. I am the Lord that teacheth thee to profit. All right? And leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. Even in business, I am 100% sure that if people were to hear the voice of the Spirit, many times I've told people, dollar will be this, will be the price by this time. I said, this, all these things are fake. One time I was watching some people on television. I said, all these, they were giving somebody rewards and what's the honors and uh, awards. And I said, it's all a fake business. And truly, it all became nonsense fake businesses. Yes. A lot of the banks, a lot of the businesses, a lot of the things, especially when you hear them giving a speech about finance and you don't understand what they are saying. Immediately, you should know that it is fake. Immediately, so that, well, how can I be that I don't understand at my age? How can it be I don't understand anything that they are saying? So many words, and you just be looking at the people. Oh, wow. Anyway, put my scripture back, please. Watch, I want you to watch. We are talking about. Why is this church not growing? Verse 18. Oh, that thou hast hearkened to my commandments. You see, if you had had the revelation, if, if these revelations, the teachings in these books, if the revelations in the Poimano and the Makane, if only you would have listened to the messages Hacking to the commandments. Eh? Look at it. Then had thy peace been as a river and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. Then you would have had a lot of peace. Wow. You'd have had a lot of calmness. Wow. Yes. One, one, somebody called one of my bishops and told him that, hey, look, you are living in a cocoon that has been created by a certain kind of leadership. That's why you are not affected by certain things that are happening. Wow. They said that most people are affected by these deaths and all these things that are going on. He said there are other people's lives, business, so many things are affected by all these changes. Yes. People walk out of buildings and kill themselves. Oh, that thou had hearkened to my voice. Then had thy peace been as a river. It would have been, it would have been calm for you. Oh, yes. yes. Today, if they say the price of this is this, this has changed to this, this has changed, even though we are in this campus, it doesn't affect us. It doesn't affect us. But there's not even, there's not even any blocks here that are, we are owing to any, anybody here. There's no blocks for anybody. There's nothing. Yes. That will be your story soon. And you, you are called pastors. You have churches. And you cannot say that. More lay pastors would have been full-time pastors. More lay pastors would have been full-time pastors if they were to be listening and hearkening. So that's why you find lay pastors around the age of 40, between 40 and 50, and all that. that is when they become disgruntled, lay pastors. And their business is not working, and then they start to look around and see whether the church can be a source, or maybe the church can be 
the place for full time. It's around, it's what we call midlife crisis. As after going for a while, I realized that your business is not, your petrol station is not working. Your this is not working. Your that is not working. Now watch. Those of us who are in the ministry, pastors, if you were to be listening to these messages, your ministry would not be as minuscule as it is. Minuscule. Bring minuscule. Are these guys alert? M I N I S Q S C U L E. Okay. It's it's late, so I'll excuse them. All right, anyway, if you had been able to receive the commandments, the revelations, the books, attempt great things, make yourself saviors of men, testers and partakers, I mean, seven great principles, going deeper, doing more, faith secrets. How can I say thanks? Am I good for nothing? Stir it up. All these beautiful messages, if you love the Lord, the anointing, steps to the anointing, if you had, if I'm telling every single pastor here, you wouldn't be sitting there with 67 members adding children and newborn babies to all the attendance, to the attendance, faking attendance and incomes. At this age, you are faking attendance and incomes. Why? Bring my scripture back. I will show you. Verse 19. Thy seed also had been as the sand. That's supernatural. Your members would have been like the sand. And the offspring of thy bowels like the gravel thereof. If you, listen, look at the verse before. If you are hacking to my commandment, your members would have become, become like sand. And the members will have become like gravel. You can't even count that. That's supernatural church growth and plenty of, you can't even see who they are. Yes, if you had hearkened or listened, all that thou hast hearkened to my commandments. The messages and the commandments. Then you would have had peace in verse 18. Then verse 19. Verse 19 says, then your seed, which is your members or your offspring, the fruit of your ministry would have been like sand. That's the reality for every pastor, I'm telling you. Your members are not like sand. They are like pillars or buildings you can count. One, two, three, four, with COVID spacing and you've arranged the people there. I mean, let's be serious. The nonsense flesh attitude and nonsense way of counting that has made us into a minuscule ministries. Very small. Minuscule, very small. Yes. You are in your town and you are not dominating the, the town. You are counting the members like one, two, three, four. He said, if you had, if you had hacking. And why would you not hacking? I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard. You are not in the spirit if the whole year. The whole year goes by, you are not in the spirit. You're not here even one thing. Look 
Look at the gems and the golden diamonds that are here. Look at the type of ministry that you are a part of. Look at the place that you claim you are a son of this, son of this. And look at your finances. Look at your financial situation. I'm telling you the realities. Are you thinking that I'm coming to say anything different from what is in my books? I'm saying only what is in my books already. But you wouldn't hacken. That is why you've not benefited from it. I'm standing in that oil, in that grace. All over the world, people are, people are inviting me. I can't even go. You can ask them. They invite me. I say, what is this? Invitation to here, invitation to here, invitation to here, invitation to here. I can't even go. Oh, yes. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard fleshly men wearing collars. Can now people saying they are pastors and bishops? A bishop, you can't even have $1,500 to buy a ticket. You are calling yourself a bishop. I mean, the church is there. You are preaching, 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 preaching. You can't, even if they say come for a meeting, you can't go. Because you don't have any man. There's no, the church has nothing. You are in a church without a roof. I mean, how many years will you be without a roof? <laughs> Bishop Sam, I'm going home. I think, I think that, I think that I'm, I'm, I'm done for the evening. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going home. I'll stop now. Yes. Minuscule churches, minuscule offerings, minuscule attendance, very low, very shameful, very shameful. Why is this church not growing? No, I mean, you, I mean, unless I'm not reading the Bible, it says, oh, that thou art hacking to my commandment. Then had thy peace been as a river and your righteousness as the waves of the sea. And then your seed would have been like sand. Plenty, baby, the members, plenty. Plenty. But instead of your members, being plenty, all your members fit into one Toyota highest bus. All your members together, they go into one Toyota or one Evan. You are, you are a shame of a pastor. Yes. Your title, reverend, this, that, whatever. It is all almost nonsense title. Almost nonsense. It doesn't make sense. Yes. Reverend of what? Bishop of what? Pastor of what? You should be ashamed of yourself. The most basic Christian function of a minister of the gospel to build the church and to make the church grow. That's the most basic function. The most basic function that you don't know and you can't do it. You know, recently, one of our bishops, somebody asked him, what do you think we can do to make the church grow? And he said to him, I think we should just stay with PVCI. You see, what is PVCI is uh, this book here. Where is, uh, yeah, transform. Where is transform and then how to become a shepherd. At, yeah, what it means to become a shepherd. And then transform your pastoral ministry. You get it? I don't know how to find it, but I'm sure it's somewhere. You see, there are so many now. 
Oh, yes. Transform your pastoral ministry. Hmm. And I'm sure it's somewhere. Yeah. He said, I think, I think we should just stay with, with um, PVCI. You see, but we have another book. Where is Double Mega? Where is it? Double Mega Missionary Church. Yeah. Now you see, thank you, where the PVCI has been expanded. Your church has church growth strategies and wisdom. Wisdom that has built a church all over the world. Yes, that's for your church. That's your, your ministry that you are claimed to be sons and daughters of. What about you? In your town. You should have been the most prosperous man in the town. You know, one day I went to um, Madagascar. And then some of the pastors were explaining. You know, their language, the words are long. You know, like how the, like even the capital, Antananarivo. Uh -huh. It's like, it's long. So they have long words. So it's like to learn the language is also a special thing. You know, and uh, some of the pastors were saying, ah, this place, this church cannot work. I sent one pastor there. He was not able to do the work. And he told the people, oh, Madagascar is for Madagascans. <laughs> we should leave it. And he started to ask the people to, to leave. Oh, you go here, you go here. Don't stay here. Madagascar is for Madagascar. You know, but what, at a point, one of the young men said to me, look, Bishop, we know a Ghanaian pastor. In the capital city, he has more than 2,000 members. Wow. And he teaches the people, he's, he, I don't think he preaches even in three, he teaches the people even three songs sometimes. Yes. And he's there, he's got thousands of members, very prosperous. You see him, he says he has different mobile phones. This mobile phone is for Momo, this one is for this, this one is different things. Yes. Now, now listen. So you see, uh, uh, one of you see that one of our church. You see the church is struggling to have even hundred people, and you see you may think that it's not working, but it is you who are not able to receive this word because where people have opened their spirits genuinely and have received the message, the message, and have received the word and are obedient to it, and are listening to it, they produce fruit. He says that if you had hearkened, your seed would have been like the sand and like the gravel. That is, that, is, that is like what God told Abraham, like the stars of the sky, like the sand of the sea. You can't even count it. That's the ministry that you are a part of. That's the family that you are a part of. How come no drops of that grace are falling on you? Yes. Why? You've not asked why. It is the questions when you start asking them, it shows that your spirit is now opening. Yes. It shows that your spirit is now opening. Then you don't ask questions. Why did somebody fall down under the power? Why did they not fall down under the power? Why are people healed? Why are people not healed? Why is this church growing? Why is it not growing? Why has this happened? Why has this good thing happened? Why has this bad thing happened? You have no questions. You have no questions. The Bible says Jesus Christ sat there hearing them and asking questions. How many of our pastors can boast of 1,000 members in attendance? Where you are saying it's not possible, there is somebody there who has it. That's what I'm saying. I gave the example in Madagascar. There's somebody there, a Ghanaian, who also doesn't speak that language. Even three. I don't know what language he preaches in, but he preaches, and then he has over 2,000 members. And you are there. You can't, you can't even manufacture a door. 
You are in a church without a door. You know, recently one of our pastors, I think he's in Adesso. I don't know where Adesso is. Adesso, where is it? Yeah, he sent me a picture. He said he has made some doors. And it's the only pastor I've seen sending me pictures that he's made doors. He, I said, how much is one? He said, 2,400. He has made, and he has made a pile of them. He's received one. He's fixing it. Made, he's organized himself. Yeah. And no other person will do, do the door. They'll say, oh, we don't have money for this. We are waiting for money from a white fool to send money to us. A foolish white man. You see, this is the psychology in Ghana. We are sitting down thinking that a white man is going to send something to us to come and it's not going to happen yesterday. It's not going to happen today. That's why we are still one of the poorest countries. That's why from Accra to Kumasi, you still can't drive on a clear road. Nobody is going to nonsense come and save you. I'm telling you. You think you, think you are clever as you sit where you are. You have no money. Oh, we don't have money for that. Oh, well, oh, look, we have, we have see us mobile. Will you buy us a car? Will you buy? It? We are not going to buy no nonsense car for you. No nonsense car is going to be bought for you. Ah. I've been around for so many years. I don't have a car. You know, are you not a man of God? Are you not a man of God? <laughs> you are, are you not a man of God? Why do you need somebody to buy a car for you? A man of faith and power. Where's your faith? You people, you see, the Bible is a practical book. It's real. People don't believe it and don't implement it. That's why you didn't do well in school. When you sat down, they taught you physics, chemistry, biology, math, and you bombed. And it's the same way you are bombing the spiritual one. You are bombing the Bible one. You are bombing my books one. They teach you my books and you are bombing. They teach you church growth. You are bombing. You are a bomber. You might as well go to Ukraine and start shooting bombs there. Everything you are taught, you can't do well. Oh, I thought you had stopped all those things. I thought you were now starting to do well. After bombing your secondary education, bombing WASI, bombing JSS. Eh? Simple course like JSS. You can't pass. Ow! Oh, you can't go to university. When you go cry, you go and use a poor over there. Oh, and that is why now, when you read church growth, you can't apply it. You can't apply nothing. And that's why you are having a church which is a minuscule church, which is a, a so small. And the, the income is so small. You are like a beggar and a very poor person. Ah, it is a shame. It is a shame. It's a shame. You are making the ministry look like an embarrassment. Uh, people are hating the church and hating for their children to work in the church because of the, what you have made the ministry look like. That is why I say, why is this church not growing? Yes, sit down.
Matthew chapter 9. People, and I'm reading from NIRV. People don't sew a patch of new cloth on old clothes. The new piece will pull away from the old. That will make the tear worse. People don't pour new wine into old wine skins. If they do, the skins will burst. The wine will run out and the wine skins will be destroyed. No, people pour new wine into new wine skins. Then both are saved. You see, this message, the beautiful message we have, the message of loyalty, the message of church growth, the message of church planting, of shepherding, of many are called to the ministry, is a message that if the wine skin doesn't also adjust itself, the message will rather burst the wine skin and the wine skin will be destroyed. So if you don't take it, the message will rather destroy you. And as I'm preaching now, you say, ah, he came to say that if you don't have $1,000, then you are this and that. He came to say that nonsense, whatever, and so on. So if because you are an old wine skin, every new wine that is poured into you, it causes a burst. Yes. It becomes a nonsense burst. And it's, it's like pouring that into you was a nonsense mistake. True. You came to say that some people are monkeys and some people are frogs. That's not what I said. I never said that. Yes. So when you are an old wineskin, when a new revelation is coming, you get it? you see that it rather disturbs you. And that's why the old wine skin will burst when the new wine comes in. But when you, you are okay, when the new wine comes in, it just, you just flow with it. Yes. So from today, you are a new wine skin. And every new message that is coming into your life is not destroying you. It's not destroying you. It's not destroying you. Why should a message from God destroy you? The message of God should not destroy you. The message from God should build you up and cause great increase and great growth in the name of Jesus Christ. Every standing, everybody standing. Now, what is going to be the sign of your, the beginning of your spirituality is questions that you ask. At the beginning of Jesus' ministry, it was the questions he asked, the answers he received that revealed that he was unusual. Why is this church not growing in this town? In this town, after seven years, after four years in the Bible school, after being a member here, after being a lay pastor, why? Why can't I? Have, why don't I have any money? Why can't I not even paint my church? Why do I? Why am I still a beggar? Why am I called bishop but I have no signs of a bishop? It's the first sign that you've started to become spiritual. Yes. I'm telling you, you can remember this all your life. A real, if you ask me all through the years, I've always been asking questions. When I see Bonke, when I see this, when I see that, I say, why is this person like this? Even recently, I was, why, why was Bonke's ministry the best? And the Lord said to me, because he was in Africa. Because he was in Africa. Make no mistake about it. There are spiritual answers to spiritual questions. Now, because we, don't, we are not even interested, there will be no question that will be asked. 
and you will continue to bomb. You see, do you know why people don't, don't do well in exams? They don't do past questions. They don't have questions. If you ask, if you do past questions, what hap- you see, what happens in exams is that when you see, I don't know if they still do it, but we used to have some red paper, some small red. It was folded like this. When you open, it's printed. The question one, two, then you turn over, three, four, A level. Yes. Red papers. Are you listening? The first thing that happens in an exam is that when you see the question, you feel like we win. Because you start to have fear as you see the things. You see that, yes, this one there, I'm failing. But when you do pass questions, when you do pass questions, questions upon questions, when you are in the exam room and they bring the paper, it's like something you've been doing in the house many times. So when you look at it, you are so used to, even you are used to even the way the questions are asked. A man was driving his car at this velocity speed. He went up a hill by this, that, that. What is the acceleration? Calculate the acceleration. And that's all. But you've seen many like that. So questions is the first sign of intelligence even in school. Those of you who are students, listen to me. I was, I've never failed any exam as far as I can remember from, from one to upper six. And the whole of university, I don't remember even one time I failed any exam I was ever referred. Ever. I'm, I don't remember. Maybe I was, but I can't remember. No, no, don't clap because I say I can't remember. I'm not saying I was. I say I can't remember. Yes. But I'm telling everybody here who is in school, if you want to be the first, or you want to be in the first ten, or you want to do well, do you see, I'm telling you, go and look on the first day of the school. Go and look for the past question of that course. Don't wait to the end. When you wait to the end, you panic. Because you learn differently from the question. Every school, every, what school are you in? Anglo Senior High School. Yeah. So you are going to do what? Wasi. Yes. Wasi, you will be at the top. If only you go and get the questions now and start answering them now. Why, why do you, th- you know, one time I, I met a sister. She told me she's from one of the regions. She said, oh, in the, our region, we, when we sit in the exam, they work out the questions for us all the time in our region. We get all the And they always bomb too. You see? Because even though you know the questions, you can't really understand it. He said, we always see the questions. Always. And, still. and they still bomb. Are you listening? Yes. Everybody who is a student, I beg you, listen, because maybe this is only one of the reasons why God brought you here. Amen. University, school, everything. If you are starting, not at the end, at the first day, Go for the questions. Find the questions of that course. And look at it. And start looking at the questions and answering them. By the time the exam comes. And I can tell you, in the whole Ghana, in our time, there was only one medical school. And they take 50 students. And they interview the whole country for the question. And the first 10 people to be interviewed. First 10, automatic taking. I was in the first 10. I was the fifth person. Yes. Oh, I'm not saying you should clap, but I'm explaining to you the credentials that I have to be telling you how to pass That's exams. It. It. Yes. It. And when I finished medical school, today, they wrote the last final, they wrote to me. They said you are in the top whatever, so you don't have to go uh, uh, to the district to do whatever. In my fifth year, which is the final part one, 
I won the Valco Prize, the two best students. I was given a ticket. I was sent abroad. I was given thousands of pounds. Oh, yes. As, as prize. Oh, no, listen. Listen to what I'm saying. I'm telling you the credentials that I have to talk about exams. And I'm telling you that people, you are failing because you are not asking questions at the right time. It's the same reason for the spiritual questions. You are not doing well because there are no questions in your mind. Why do I have no money? Why do I have no car? Why do I have... And the answers are in the books. Why, why do I not prosper? Lack of knowledge, lack of skill. How come you are in a church? There is nothing there. It's so, oh, the town, the this, the that, the that. But we are in Ghana. I've been a Christian for so many years. Serving the Lord and working in the church. It's the same Ghana. In the same Ghana, I've never lived outside Ghana. I've never gone to live outside Ghana for any length of time. Never. All my life is in Ghana. I've never moved, let's say I'm going to America for two years in all my years. No, no, no. I've only been here. There's no country that can say that I've come to stay there before. Yes. No country can say that I've, I, that's where I went or that's where I've been. No. We are all here. In this environment, which we have had since 1957. Yes. Ask yourself. Listen to the preaching. Everybody, don't even think of that church. Think of yourself. I'm preaching to you as a person. And asking you why you are not doing well when you are in a church and in a ministry which has top revelations and books that are bought and wanted. I was in Argentina a few weeks ago. Oh, yes. I was in Singapore. I went, I went to, one day I went to preach somewhere. The pastor told me, you are my favorite preacher. Wow. Yes. And, and this is a mega church, not Ghanaians. Not Ghanaians. He said, you are now my favorite preacher. Yes. I was with Reverend Eastwood uh, on Sunday. He was, we were talking. I said, oh, when he goes, he should say this and that and so on. And he said to me, I said, oh, maybe they are not inviting me because I'm, I'm not powerful. But he said, huh. Rather, he said that you are very powerful. Your preaching is very so clear that anybody can understand it. It's very, very powerful. Yes. You are here receiving something that is clear. Children, listen to the message. And look at your age. You can't hear. I mean, look at your age. You can't hear. People that are children are able to understand. Hmm. Your members are few. Your money is small. The prosperity is not working. Yes. And it is because if, he says, I am the Lord, that teacher thee to profit. And lead that thee in the way that thou shouldest go. Oh, that thou had hacking. Hacking. Oh, that thou had hacking to my commandment. Then had thy peace been as the river and thy righteousness as the wave of the sea. And thy seed had been as the sand and the offspring of thy bowels like the gravel thereof. His name should not have been cut off nor destroyed. You see, his name destroyed. His name. His name is destroyed. His name is shamed. Ministry is shamed. Ministry is shamed by the type of pastors and the type of bishops. The ministry is shamed. So his name should not have been destroyed. Look at it. His name has been messed up. So don't be a pastor. Be a this, be a that, be a whatever. His name is destroyed. Yes. He says, his name should not have been cut off nor destroyed before me. My name would not have been messed up. You see people who are failures gasping their last gaggles as they are drowning in their own failure and their own cesspit of failure. And they are gargling feces. And they are now pointing fingers at at, at people who have rather helped them all this year, but they could not receive the revelation and they could not do the church work. Poor performers, disgruntled employees. And you find them speaking and gossiping among themselves. 
That's all they can do. But cannot receive the word. Their hearts and their minds are not open. Oh, yes. True, I'm telling the truth. My name is destroyed. He said, my name will not have been cut off. My name is destroyed. You've given a bad name to ministry. Bad name to full-time ministry. Bad name to full-time ministry. So when you go, they will not pay you. They will not do this. They will not. Ah! You are the failure. You bomb school. You bomb this. You bomb everything. And ministry to you are bombing. The books are there. Powerful. <laughs> A mobile. A mobile. Now ask your neighbor. You are standing in the front as though it doesn't apply to you. You know yourself. Lift up your hands. Pray in a moment. Thank you, Father, for guiding us, speaking to our hearts. Thank you for all the books, yes. Yes, revelations. Yes. Given to us. Rinda la barra mama 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 sondarianda raboshe ria bakarianda la baba mama mama manda la ba shanda la baba. Amen. We have prayed, and everyone said amen. Sit down, everybody. Amen. Take out your offering. I'm going to end here. We'll come early in the morning to continue. Amen. Take out your special offering. How many realize that some people are destroying the name of God and destroying the name of ministry? Yes. I think the same bombing from school is following some people. Yes. How many bombed in school? Raise your hand if you bombed in school. No, only on this side, raise your hand if you bombed in school. What about this side? You bombed in school. What about in the middle here? Did you bomb in school? Hmm. Have you seen why they use education to decide almost everything? They find, is he a graduate? Has he been to school? Has he got masters? Has he done PhD? Has he done this? Does he have that? What does he have? What qualifications? Because it has a meaning. Because if you failed in the maths, or you failed in English, and you failed in geography, do you see? It's likely that you'll be failing in all. That's why most, when I look at, listen. Hold on, hold on, hold on. When I, when I look at my results, O level, I had the same grade for every subject. I did eight subjects. I had the same grade for, for seven. I had one, one, we didn't use A's. We had one, 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 seven ones. And this last time I had two. When I did A level, I had the same grade, physics, chemistry, biology. Because when you do well in this, you are likely to do well in the next, even if it's unrelated, literature, science, maths, geography, 
whatever it's like you are likely to do it. So that's why when you, shh, please listen, oh, listen, you see, you can't talk, blah, 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 but you have nothing to show. Nothing to show. You say, when I, when I, look, when I'm preaching, nobody should say what I'm going to say. If you know it, keep it in your head and prove in your church that you can build a mega church and have a good income. Don't, don't, don't speak what I'm about to preach. If you know it, be quiet because I'm preaching. I don't, I don't like that. Yes. And you have nothing to show for all your shouting and talking when I'm preaching. If you know it, use, use it. Use it. It's revelation that brings growth. It's revelation that brings growth. Without revelation, and that's why I'm trying to open your spirit to revelation by asking that. Ask questions. Ask questions. Why am I called bishop? This one is called bishop. Why is this one driving a Land Cruiser and I have to take Uber? Or I am using a bus? Or I'm borrowing church members' cars? Why? Why am I driving people's cars? Ask yourself the question. I have never hindered anybody from having a car. If you don't have a car, I've not hindered you from having a car. Never. <laughs> Never. And you see my life, very simple. Yeah. I don't use many of the church things that I should use. I don't use them. I'll just be moving around. I'm okay. Oh, yes. So, nonsense flesh behavior it's not leading to any real, genuine increase. You don't know the things in this book, and you are not applying them. We are here to talk about church, church growing. And there are legitimate questions that we have to ask ourselves. Why? Oh, because I'm in the central region. Your central region from where? What's the difference between Accra and the central region? Do you know Accra? Do you know how to stay in Accra? Do you know the troubles that are in Accra? Oh, Tema, do you know, have you come to stay here before? Go and ask all the plenty of people who are staying in Accra, whether it, they are not living under village circumstances in a very expensive place. When the whole city is almost like a slum that is developing and spreading, it's like another village, you have brought your hometown to Accra and spread it. Come and see, when we take pictures of Accra, you cannot distinguish Accra from most villages in Ghana. Maybe you don't know. If I show you this picture, I say, where is it? I, I, I say, is this part of Accra or this part of Tema? You will see that it's the same as wherever you are coming from. It's time to start benefiting from where you belong. If you are part of a tree and the tree is bearing mangoes and you alone are producing a minuscule tangerine. Hey. Something is wrong. So I'm praying that by the time we finish this, and I told you no matter how short because I don't know what else to say Today, I have many things I can say. Many. Many. But I, I pray that the Holy Spirit will speak. I hope you become spiritual for a change. Amen. Yes. Amen. You see the unspiritual ones falling asleep when you are preaching. Why? Because their mind is not engaged. You see, the reason why we put children in a car so that they sleep when you go, their mind you just go. And their mind goes off and then they sleep. Your mind is not connected to what is going on. It's not even interested. So when your mind is not interested, it disconnects and then it starts to become like lullabies. And then you fall asleep. Yes. That's why people put on television and whatever to sleep. You are not mentally connected. Because your mind and your spirit, your mind is connected to your spirit. It's not linked to the wonders of the message and of the word. That's why you see the most unspiritual people, you see them nodding off during preaching. They are nodding off. You can't connect to them. If we start talking about boyfriends and girlfriends and this and stories, then it will connect to their mind. Then they'll wake up and start chatting and gossiping. But when you can't start talking about the word, oh, then they start. 
because it doesn't connect to their mind, which means it's not connecting to their spirit. That's why I said that. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And then I heard. For the first time, I heard something. I started to hear what I had not been hearing because I was now spirit in the spirit or now spiritual. Whether you're called pastor or not, reverend and bishop and all, they are institutional norms for us to be able to understand what everybody is and who everybody is. It has almost no meaning to be called bishop, pastor. It has almost no, no, no relevance. No relevance at all. Your name is greater than your title. Okay. Your name is greater than your title. Okay. My name is greater than my title. Many people don't know my title. Your name is greater than your title. When you bear fruit, your name will start to have some value. Your name is greater than your title. You can't be concerned about reverend, bishop, pastor. I've been for 13 years. I, it, then it's rather a shame that you've been around for so long. Look at your state. Is it not a shame? So my prayer is that in this time, your spirit will click open for the first time. Amen. And then, blah, you start to see. And you start to ask questions. Why? And good questions, not accusations. Yes. Not accusations. Yes. And I know that when you do that, the Holy Spirit will, will bless you. Ah, questions. I've been asking questions for years. Yeah. For me, school, secondary, uh, university. Secondary school, university. I just have questions. You see me working, I have questions in my pocket. They called me Houdini, the magician. Because we called past questions magic. We called it magic. So they called me a magician. Because as for past questions, I'll be there from day one. You can laugh at me, but the result, you see, few people can say they've never failed a, any exam. Before. Few people can say such things, especially in a medical school. Few people can say the credentials that I'm giving you for medical school. Oh, yes. Yes. So, I, I, I'm telling you something. And in the ministry too, you see, we are all here in the ministry. I don't know most of you. You have become like the sand of the sea. As a result of a certain level of fruit bearing. You are what denomination? Do you know other denominations that have been? They come and they go. They come and they go every week. You are coming here today. Others are coming next week. Different every time this place is full. Of different denominations. Yes. They have become like sand. Like I don't know them. I can't count them. I am praying that this grace, eh, by the time we are finishing, that grace and that anointing will be on you and on your life and your ministry. And that whatever made you fail your secular exams, that thing, that mark of the devil on your life will be blown away in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen. Take your offering. Take your offering. 